We are back. Welcome back to the NXL here in uh, Kissimmee, Florida, 2024. I am uh, Matt Falby. I'm here with Allie from uh, Northern Lights. Allie, want to introduce yourself? Hello, Allie, number 88 Northern Lights, uh, representing Canada all the time. Um, big shout out to 86 Headgear. Check out the shirt. Um, he's a great guy, Dan the Man. Check him out. He makes headgear, hats, t shirts, everything you need. Shout out to Di, supporting us all the way in this humid Florida weather. All right, well, we're about to watch the Sea Dogs take on the Newbies, a fellow Canadian team for you. And Let's then on go. the back side of that, we're going to watch Leverage versus New York Wrecking Crew. Sea Dogs on your left. And we're on. Five um, alive both sides. Immediate kill, though, for Newbies. They're going to take a walk from this uh, snake corner. See the Sea Dogs player trying to get up, see what he can do. This is Campbell. Nick Campbell. Yeah, he's... All the way past the 50. Well, he pulled angle. up. There's... Very wisely pulled up. There's a stream coming in. Somebody new. you got to keep your head up. Watch that paint coming in. This uh, god for the newbies on that guy. Tries to bite in. He makes it. Campbell's going to get a little bit of an examination from the ref. Doing what he can to make that cross shot. And there I think he gets is. clipped. Yeah, I think the home managed to drop a shot in on him when he, when he ran that, around that corner. I did notice on this field the uh, the home bunker on the right side specifically here. It's a little bit higher. The the ground isn't super level, so you're able to drop in those shots pretty good. Yeah, that's one of your risks on this field as a snake player. There's some drop shots that can just come in and surprise you. Absolutely. Even when you feel you're safe, you're not fully safe. Nope. I believe it's a four on three advantage here for newbies. Bite into the snake for the sea dogs here, trying to make something happen. All right, losing Campbell really blunted the tip of their spear here for sea dogs. Yep. They need to get Rosardo in there doing some damage. This newbie snake player posted up, waiting for him. I think we have, a, a, again, a bounce shot. Somebody's trying to bounce a shot off this uh, snake side tower into Shoemaker. I don't think it's super effective, but it's, it's worth trying if you got no shot. It's hit or miss. Uh, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sea Dog's still at home. They're in the S2. They're in the mini wall in the back line. Can't see if there's a Dorito on that side. I think it's just the mini wall. That's Mark G, mm -hmm. Connor Smith. Newbie's still in that Dorito corner. He does go ahead and make that bump up to the Dorito Tower. That's good because that corner is not a great place to live. The Newbie's player bumping out to the snake corner. You get better shots from there from the god instead. Neither of these teams want to make a mistake right now. Rodriguez trying to look for a cross or something. Game has kind of entered a little bit of a lull period where the teams are digging in, trying to figure out the puzzle, seeing how they can break this open. Looks like Sea Dogs are going to take the initiative here on the snake. Rosardo trying to crawl up, gets to the 50. He's going to pop, look for a quick kill. He might have that tower. Does he have vision on that tower? Yeah, Clayton's trying to look for a cross shot. Oh, he, he hears him. He knows he's in there. Ooh. Oh, nice kill by Rosardo. That's a big one. Yeah, he does still have to worry about that backhand, so he can't be totally cavalier here, but... Mark G fills in behind him, trying to go to work here. So I think the two newbies players are just crossed up now. Yeah, that's the best they can do at this point. Mm -hmm. This can for the uh, back corner snake can for newbies. That's a tough position to live in. Clayton trying to make moves here. Yeah, Clayton. Clay could just say no, stay low. If he gets around to the edge of this bunker and he can make sure that that can's not watching for him, he could very easily bump up to their uh, S3. Now first he's going to pop across. He's trying to catch that guy on the cross. No. He has one shot of that, and I like what he's doing. He gives up on that. Yep. Just to come up into that again, he's at a major gunfighting disadvantage. So you took your shot at it, pun intended, and now move on. And literally move on. See if you can move up the snake. There might be a highway run here coming from the newbie player. He's thinking about it. This is that puzzle solving we're talking about when yeah, the game exactly. slows down. He knows it's across. The Sea Dogs filled into the Dorito, I believe. 
I could make an argument for a drop back here by uh, Clayton in Dorito the snake. 50, yep. I believe that's Dylan over in the Doritos. The Dorito 50. That's a big position. That should shut down any attempt at a run through by number 33 for the newbies. Yeah, both teams are just crossed up here. There's the drop back we talked about. Drop back, look for something new. Yeah, tower's still on him. That's absolutely the play. Once they see you in the snake, you're you're pretty much stuck unless you move backwards. Yeah, or win a gunfight. Mm -hmm. But number 33 here for uh, newbies. He's not going. He's going to stay on the cross. He's not really going to engage with this snake. If Clayton wanted to take a huge risk, he could just attempt to crawl the whole length of the snake right here. He that, could. That tower can't drop it in, and it's very clear that number 33 is not going to be looking down that snake. It would be a, a very ballsy Ooh. play. Two coming off for the oh, that's newbies. It. Yeah, newbies are in a lot of trouble. And there they go. They point towel conceded. out of it. That was a good, slow, smart point. That was methodical on both yeah. teams. Yeah, nobody made stupid mistakes. Everybody kept their calm, tried to figure it out. Moving on this field is so important. It's it's very easy to get stuck, especially in the back line. So, you know, for us especially, it was a race to the 50 and then spreading the field. That was the most important. So I, I don't know what's changed, but we've seen a very different attacking of this field today compared to yesterday. Yesterday we saw a lot more teams, including WNXL, uh, getting to this 50 brick mm -hmm. really early on and successfully. And today the teams really have kind of abandoned that strategy. All right, Wreck and Crew on your right, Leverage on your left. Leverage may have already locked up a pro spot. Big bite. I like this Wreck and Crew up to this yep, 50 brick. Big bite out of Wreck and Crew. Five alive both sides. The great thing about that center brick, you can absolutely drop a shot onto the snake if you know he's in there. One coming off for leverage in the back there. <laughs> and a very, very late pod runner trying to get the hell off the field. <laughs> <laughs> this leverage player is in a world of trouble here. Not sure what's about to happen here. Ooh. Yeah, I... I he didn't have a lot of good options, so popping up over the top, not great, but he didn't have a lot of good oh, options. Oh, two coming off for leverage right here. I believe it's a five on... Maybe one. Three, They've just huh? got that mini wall in the back. Oh, nice move by leverage, but he's just going to crawl the whole length of it. Wow. You know what? That's the second time I've seen a towel out by a team just simply because the player got to the end of the snake. As a, a coaches know, look, he's at the R end of the snake. Forget it. Just towel there's, out of yeah, it. Yeah, there's not much so you can do at that point. No good will come of this. It's a good, good game by Ian Rolfson. All right, I think we might have seen a timeout from newbies. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a little bit of extra time to think this one out. Longer point. It's hot. Let him breathe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, today is a little bit hotter day than yesterday. Yesterday was kind of a pleasant day to play, quite frankly. There was a bit of cloud coverage. It was a little bit nice, but in the afternoon, yeah. the uh, the sun was blaring down on our Canadian skin. <laughs> it's a little muggy for us. but You're fine and fair Canadian skin, not used to this. My, uh, yeah, my winterized constitution is not made for the Florida heat. So how do the Canadian geese do it? They come all the way down here. You know what? I envy them. Maybe I should try that tactic. Yeah. <laughs> Eat grass, yeah. poop out in the open. That's the lifestyle, <laughs> man. That's what I want to do. <laughs> all right. Newbies are going to be a lot. I don't know where to go with this conversation from that one. Well, that's, a, that's it right there. We'll just cut it right there. I apologize. There's a lot of viewers. <laughs> Newbies on the left, Royal City Sea Dogs on the right. We got almost 10 minutes on the clock. See what kind of breakout they go with. I don't know if this is true. I'd have to go back and, and, and look it up. But I feel like the first points have averaged around a minute and a half, two minutes. And then the second points, for some reason, go four minutes or something like that. It's very interesting on this field. All right. Double up the home for the Sea Dogs. Ooh. Both Two teams. coming off the snake side for the Sea Dogs. Huge opportunity here for newbies in and this matchup. And one match from the newbies coming off. Newbies mini wall getting checked. He's clean. 43 situation advantage newbies, I believe. Newbies player crawling all the way up almost. Snake three. Trying to catch some packs on the cross. Newbies mini wall not really in on the action. He either needs to find something to shoot at or he needs to get out of this bunker, go do something new. Because right now his gun is kind of wasted. Sometimes it helps to draw the guns too. 
Yeah, it's not bad, just even if you do that. Yeah, he needs to move. We do have a newbies player up here at the 50. I don't know if he knows that they killed the whole snake side. That's uh, Tyler Hunter. Number 22 for newbies. All right, well, they've locked on to him now. They know he's there, so yep. he can't, he's not going to get any free kills Dorito side. He's going to have to do some work. Now, frankly, there's nothing opposing him down this snake side. He can crawl. He's got to take a little worry about the uh, home, maybe doing a drop shot, but home's not even looking his way right now. Big move up the Dorito side by uh, okay. RC. Watching that cross just in case. I think it's Dylan still alive over in the Dorito 50, looking for that cross. What did I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pat myself in the back. What did I say about the second point being longer? You did say that. Yeah, something about this field. The second point yep. is a long point. This newbies player is just waiting oh, for something to happen. Royal oh, and they get Mark G out of the home. Yeah, sea dogs. Home. Now we've got two newbies players in the snake trying to come up, make some moves. Uh, you know, again, there's nothing opposing them. This is the point. If they realize the situation, they can just just keep crawling. Yep. There's nothing opposing you. The only thing stopping you is you, son. I find it's really hard to hear. And point conceded. I find it's really hard to hear, especially when you're up far enough and your bunker's getting pelted. Sometimes yeah. you have no idea what's going on behind you. Yeah, these these big, hollow, empty, you yes. know, air bladders are incredibly loud. If you're mm -hmm. not a paintball player and you're watching this broadcast, first of all, thank you. Uh, second of all, it's really loud when you're, you're you know, your ear pressed right up against one of these bunkers. Yeah. It's it's like having a, I don't know my drums, but it's having like one of those big kettle drums or something. <laughs> just going off in your ear. Hey, thanks to Tiki's Paintball Park. If you're out in that area, give them a chance, right? Jump out there, play some paintball. Thank you uh, to Tiki's for sponsoring us. Tiki's, I'm assuming, behind Tiki's Totem and uh, Tiki's Ohana out here this weekend. We played them later this afternoon. Yeah, good luck. Be a good game. Hey, they're our sponsor. I need you to go lose against them, okay? <laughs> We're taking bribes. <laughs> yeah, please, nor the legs. Please take a knee. All right, wrecking crew on your left. Leverage on the right. We got four kind of, three kind of stacked up snake way over here. Looks like we have Reyes on snake duty here for Wrecking Crew. He's in there immediately. Double a home. They make the bite out to the snake. Oh, oh. Leverage loses one of the Doritos. They get a minor. Not what they needed. New York Wrecking Crew doing a great job moving up the field pretty much unopposed. Wow. Yeah, five on three in advantage. They're really capitalizing on that. Reyes getting great support in the middle here. He does have a snake opposer to him, though. He needs his middle wedge to lock that down. Middle wedge to lock that down. Yeah, Another nice. leverage player walking off yeah. the back line. Quick one here. Yep. And yeah, just guy. the snake. He's got a hit on his hand. It could be rub, but oh, I don't know. That leverage player had something on his hand. Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. <laughs> The thing with these points, they're either, you know, long played out or really fast. <laughs> all right. Sea Dogs versus Newbie. It's all tied up. Seven minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. Both of these teams are getting a free pass into the playoffs, by the way. So they're not playing for whether or not they can get into the playoffs. They're already in. Uh, they're playing for seeding. And if you're leveraged, you're playing to make sure that your seeding is high enough to guarantee you a pro spot. Mm -hmm. uh, Leverage is leading the league right now, the semi-pro league, uh, by not a lot of points. So as long as they can get a certain seating or above, and I, I don't have the math in front of me, they've they've won it for the year. So they mm -hmm. don't even have to win the whole thing today. Yep. Um, and that's what's being that's what's on the line here. Now, Leverage already won their first match. Um, somebody smarter and closer to the computer than me do the math right now. Leverage may or may not have already locked up that pro spot due to their earlier win. Mm -hmm. All right, Sea Dogs on your left. Newbies on the right here. Sea Dogs immediately up the middle, immediately up the middle to that center wedge. Five alive, both sides. Yep. Sea Dogs trying to take that bite right away. Newbies look like they pretty much just spread across the back. They're starting to make their secondaries. They're locking down this snake side for sure. Sea 
Dogs make it out to the Doritos, I believe. Yeah. I think it's Clayton and the Snake. We've got one coming off for the newbies. Campbell now up to his S4 for the Sea Dogs. He does have backup in that uh, backhand. Newbies are on that Dorito cross looking for that snake eye. They know Nick's in there. Campbell's looking cross, seeing if he can pick up any kills on that Dorito side, but they're not giving him anything. He's gonna they're playing it really tight on the Dorito side for newbies here. He's waiting for that guy. They know he's going to be in there. We're approaching the six-minute mark. Time is not yet an issue for either one of these teams. Anybody's game. Oh, big run through down the Dorito side by Royal City Sea Dogs. Wow. Does it pay dividends? We've got someone playing off the chaos in the middle here. All right, he gets a one-for-one. One. Just more importantly, he does not get a penalty. It's always risky on those big rundowns. Refs are definitely not playing around this weekend. No. I think the teams clean themselves up a little bit. We're not seeing as many flags today as we did see yesterday. Yesterday was a flag yes. fest. I, I doubt the refs are being more lenient. I suspect refs, uh, oh, teams are figuring it out. Oh, did he miss them? No, I think him. Campbell got nothing out of that. Refs going in to check. Not sure. Yeah, just double clean. check. That was a wasted body for Campbell. You're going to immediately fill out another another Sea Dog coming off that back line, though. The Sea Dogs are running out of players. They're running out of options. This newbie snake side is solid here. They lose their mini wall. This may just be the snake here for Sea Dogs. Yeah, and he is in trouble. There's going to be a highway, highway run, run here. Down here. And it's going to be clean. Yep, there Ooh, it is. Both sides. Point conceded, point on the board for newbies. 30 seconds. One minute. All right, thanks for joining us here. By the way, we don't know the percentage of uh, veteran paintball players versus uh, friends and family. You get these broadcasts, you often do have friends and family watching. So please remind me, occasionally we'll slow down and try to explain some stuff. If you're a veteran paintball player and I'm here sitting here explaining something you already know, I apologize, but understand there's a lot of new player people watching, maybe new players and friends and family. So Very exciting. It's awesome. I think it's awesome. I wish when I was young and still viable as a paintball player uh, <laughs> that I had this kind of thing going on. What do you mean? And so, you know, to have your family watch you, and, and especially a lot of the family who thinks like, oh, you're playing paintball. That's cute. You're in a yeah. ghillie suit. In a, no, 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 no. M Mom, Dad, this is real. This is like. This I get is that a reaction a lot. <laughs> yeah, this is a legit sport. Yeah. Like, oh, good. Can you bring your cousin to a paintball game where you guys play? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Not happening. No. <laughs> we'll sign him up for a birthday party. <laughs> yeah, this is wrong. I'll, I'll help get him to a fine sponsor like Tiki's uh, yeah. Paintball <laughs> for his birthday. Right. Leverage left. Wrecking Crew right. Ooh, big dive in. I think it's successful at Wrecking Crew. He does take that middle wedge. Big bite for Leverage here. Waiting on that snake guy. Yeah. He might be uh, wrapping a little bit too hard. This is Ian Rolfson. Ooh. Has the advantage. Immediately pays. Yep. Nicely done. Didn't Two players walking off for leverage. Yep. Didn't expect him to be up so fast. Rolfson not only getting killed, but doing a great job using his voice to help control the field and communicate. You don't usually expect your front players, especially your snake, snake players, to be your communications hub. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're head down. You're under a lot of fire. But Rolfson doing a great job of it. It helps when your next player over is, yeah, you know, right 20 feet you. away. Yeah. It makes you feel more confident in there. This is a very interesting sliding slide back. Uh, I liked it. By the New York Wrecking Crew into that back end. A little side leg. A little knee, yeah, knee drag. Rolson head checking. Leverage is trying to figure it out here, make something happen. Wrecking Crew really feels in control of this match right now. Their players are getting a little more daring about how they're approaching it. They look solid and kind of hit the brakes a little bit just to get some bodies out of the back line here. Five on three advantage still. You hear that? They just, uh, Ian Rolson telling his guys, play the time. Mm -hmm. They're up by two points. 
We're at 11 and a half, which is a ton of time. So much time. But, you know, if you're up on points and you have an opportunity to kill off some clock, it makes it more difficult for the other team to come back. So that's what he's trying to tell his guys. Slow it down. If you're on the opposite side of that equation and you're down on points and the clock's running out, you start having to take dumber and dumber risks or just bigger risks to try to make something happen. I think that's Caputo trying to make something happen in there. He got the gun advantage on that middle wedge. That's yep. a big deal. because as this, Oh, and he gave it up. I'm not sure I would have done that. It, it's really tough to, to get gun dominance, gun advantage, and he let it go. Yep. Now he's going to have to fight his way back out. That middle wedge is locked onto him. It's so important to know when to give up the dominance as well. Yeah. Now, this is another long, slow, grindy point. That's advantage to New York Wrecking Crew. A lot of clock peeling off. Five on three still, I believe. Trying mm -hmm. to make it work. Yeah, Caputo's being really active here for uh, leverage, trying to find an answer to this. But frankly, I think his teammates need to pick up some of the, the slack. He's, he's worried about this wedge here in the middle. Yeah, but he, he's going to have to. He's at a real gun disadvantage to come out and fight this. So Yeah, that shouldn't I, be his job there. There we go. At least one of his teammates slides up to that Dorito Tower, now up to the D2 over on the other side. That's good. Leverage it's needs some other offense going on. This Wrecking Crew player in the snake is very patient. Just posted on that guy. Looks like we got a nice shot of Seabass in the back corner here trying to help out his boy Caputo. Okay, here's what, this is n not realistic for Caputo to figure this out. And he could jump, the jump, not run highway, Ooh. but he could jump and run through the middle, actually, and run around the backside of that wedge. Ooh. Nicely done. Nice move. I think Caputo got hit in the pack, but. I think he took two, at least. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, Wrecking Crew has now crossed the 50 over on the Dorito side. They're going to close it out. I liked that move by Caputo. His his time was running out. His options were running out. His teammates were dying behind him. He, he rolled the dice and did something. He figured yeah. out that instead of going straight forward, which would have resulted in his death, or jumping the, the, the snake and trying to run straight forward, which would result in his death. you got to find the route. His option was to go sideways. And and while it didn't work, it was a very smart move. He did get a kill out of it, but he, you know, he couldn't finish a two-on-one at that point. All right, we're going to go back to the newbies versus Sea Dogs. Sea Dogs are going to be on your right, newbies on your left. Thank you to Wasteland Paintball Park out in Texas. Again, a lot of Texas sponsors. Texas really supporting the NXL. I hear the barbecue's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, other 49 states? Where are you? We need you. All right, so thanks to Wasteland Paintball Park. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for uh, supporting this broadcast. If you're at home, and especially if you're down in that area, give them a chance. Go, go try them out. out. Ten seconds. You can feel the tension of this match right now. Yeah. Dog eat dog, pun intended. Oh, I see what you're <laughs> doing there. <laughs> see dogs look like they're clean All into right. the snake. Five alive, both sides. Yep. Clayton's in there trying to go to work. Sea dog side and the snake. The newbies make the sideways bump from the home into that mini wall. I like that. You do not want to stay doubled up at that home for very no. long. So easy to get pinched out of that home. All right, newbie's at the snake insert. This was this mini temple. He's going to decide to go out to the snake corner. Still out there, yeah. I, whoa, almost, Ooh. almost took a dive. Um, I honestly, I would have preferred him going up the middle if at all possible, because I think you can do a lot more up the middle of this field than you can from that snake corner. Not sure if they wanted to leave their snake players an island there to defend themselves. They know the Sea Dogs have a hard snake push. We've got two looking this way at least. Can't see the Dorito side for Sea Dogs here. Number 16 for Newbies. He's uh, in the snake, looking cross, seeing if he can pick up something on that Dorito side. Dorito Tower is hot for Sea Dogs. They might be able to lock on that, win a gunfight.
think Clayton's looking for that cross Dorito shot. He knows there's a guy in the back wing. Staying more on the back line for the Seahawks at this point. Yeah, that Sea Dog corner is doing a really good job kind of drop shotting in on number 16 here for newbies, and he's keeping that player in check. That newbie snake player just wanted to move forward, but a stream of paint made him made him change his mind. The bounces in the snake are crazy as well. I know in practice you, you can bounce it for any spot. It's very hard to see, especially from the corners. Um, you can't see them crawling through or crawling forward, so you really have to stay posted on that. Garrett Baldwin's trying to look across, see if there's anything he can shoot at. Nobody wants to make a mistake right now. No, this is a <laughs> very, very long point. We're approaching the two-minute mark, which is amazing. We're only at a 2-1 score. Generally, these points run faster than, than this on this field, but these guys are digging in. They really want this point. They're trying to play more cautiously. You know, you know what this looks like? This looks like playoff paintball, which both these teams are going to the playoffs. But this is the kind of don't make a mistake, really, really locked down, really, really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, discipline kind of point out of both teams. Every point counts. But Sea Dogs are now under two minutes, and they're down by point. If they want to win this match, although Ooh. they do just take that snake corner, they're going to need to launch some kind of offense okay. here. Okay, Garrett Baldwin jumps into the snake with Clayton. You can hear them trying to figure it out. DeVivo moves up to that uh, Dorito Tower up there at the same time. Ooh, newbies just filled the snake behind there. Yep, newbies get into the snake corner. How are we doing on paint? Baldwin. Not, I'm seeing some empty packs. Yeah, we're starting to run out of paint on the field. I think that's why Garrett jumped in. You know what? I, honestly, that's a benefit. Right now, if I'm the coach... I'm screaming at my guy internally. I'm screaming at my guys to start pushing this offense. Yep, absolutely. And I want them running out of paint because uh, that can help them make moves. You know, they once they realize they're out of paint, they start getting aggressive. 60 seconds. Yeah, Sea Dogs, you've got to go. Mark, they got to go for a point here if they want to tie. You have got to go. I, I can't believe it needs to get gun dominance on that snake corner, then go, go do the newbies uh, snake player, or his, his back player needs to be that gun dominance. But that's the play right here. Mark G up the middle trying to make something work. Campbell's body is not going to be worth anything in about 35 seconds, so you might as well take a gamble. There you go. Let's go, Mark G. One at least. Ooh, he's gesturing. Oh, no. No, that is going to oh, be against the newbies. The There's an opportunity here. Oh, that swing is a point. major. That's a major under 60 seconds. That's a swing point. Yep. So, if, again, if you're at home and you're relatively new to the sport, uh, one of the rule tweaks we have going on is, so we have minors and majors. A minor is uh, you, you get pulled in a, and a teammate gets pulled. A major, which is a red flag, you get pulled for cheating or whatever, and you get two of your teammates pulled. Mm -hmm. But the little tweak on that rule is underneath 60 seconds, if, if your team gets a major, you, the, the game automatically stops, that point stops, and a point is awarded to the other team. Um, and that's to prevent some really last-second mayhem, chaos, intentional cheating behavior. Um, and I think that's what just happened there. We saw a major on the newbies. Good on Mark for pulling that out. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but he's just that good. <laughs> the refs are going to sort it out. They're going to they're have a conversation make sure that that's the call. That's why you haven't seen the scoreboard change yet. But I think that's they're where we're heading with this call. Yeah. Uh, this is a ref crew that is absolutely willing to stop, have a conversation, figure mm -hmm. it out, and do the right thing. Yep. And honestly, I don't. A lot of ref crews are not willing to do that. They just want to move on. They don't want to. They don't want a controversy, so they pretend that they're very confident in their call. It's hit and, and miss. Yeah, and they just they're just like, yeah, no, no, that's our call. We're not gonna. I'm we're not tired. gonna discuss. <laughs> but we're gonna find out here. And by the way, if the newbies don't have enough bodies to fulfill that penalty, meaning two bodies were supposed to be pulled and they didn't have enough, they're gonna have to start the next point down a body. So they might be starting mm -hmm. four on five or even three on five. They're probably going to, I don't know if they'll try to go for the win. Yep. Go to All overtime. All right. So Sea Dogs, are. I believe they're going to get that point. They start down a body. Yeah, I just heard a rough say that. Down, down. That is a 
Awful Ooh. turn of events for the newbies. That's not what you want. No. I think, do not trust that scoreboard. I think that scoreboard is wrong. It should be 2-2, not 3-1. All right, this scoreboard is correct. Rack and crew up by 3 nothing. We've got eight minutes on the clock. No, wait. Nine minutes on the clock. Thanks to Titan Legal for sponsoring us. Titan Legal, do you have a paintball lawyer division? Somebody that can come out here and argue on the behalf of coaches? <laughs> I think I think there's 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 room there. There's room. Might have a few spots. Yeah, there's an opening in this uh, in this sport. Nobody yells here. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Nobody argues. Yeah. Everyone's friends. Uh, maybe afterwards. <laughs> Hit the beer tent. Everything's fine. <laughs> All right. Leverage down by three points. This is really not uh, what they wanted, especially as they're trying to lock up this, this pro spot. we got to pull some out here, boys. Plenty, plenty of time on the clock. Big run for New York Wrecking yep. Crew. Wow. They, oh, they, ref going in to check, though. They go into that Dorito side snake bunker right off the bat. That might have been a, hey, we're up by three points. Let's just try some fun stuff. Wrecking Crew also very aggressive up the snake. Leverage player in that center wing just posted, waiting for a head, a hopper to come up. This is Morin for leverage here in the snake three. Looking cross. Get that cross shot. He's These got crosses are so intense. We've got Aiden Chaseman, a, a Boston lad, working the snake for New York Wrecking Crew, number four. Ooh, there's a leverage player in the wing, cutting it tight. Yep. Oh, we have a player peeling off that back line for leverage, so they just dropped a body. Down to four. From the mini wall. Run, run through, coming in. I Ooh. think they're going to get the, no, he's not even going to oh, get the clean. trade. It's going to be clean. That's kind of a wasted body. Wow, look how many hits he has on him. There's just a couple. That was Colton Dahl. Moran absolutely shut that down for leverage. He's like, no, you're not taking my absolutely player. Absolutely not. You're going to pay the price. Admire your spirit, <laughs> but I'm going to pluck your heart yeah. out and eat it. <laughs> Ooh, and I see a ref signaling Dorito player come off yep. there, I believe, Wrecking Crew. Yeah, Wrecking Crew loses their Dorito guy, the, guy, the one that was in that big run out up into that snake on the, on the Dorito side. Okay, four on three advantage leverage. Mm -hmm. Wrecking Crew has decent, uh, decent setup Ooh. for a defensive situation. Just as I say that, Snake Player gets clipped. Oh. Now, Leverage is the one under pressure to make something happen. They're down three points. We're now at about seven and a half minutes on the clock. Caputo's looking to go. Up until this point, in this point, Wrecking Crew's the one that's been bringing the aggression. And he's going to get the Snake that's Player. That's a trade, yeah. Caputo's trying to clean up here. He might have shot his own guy. I think you can make an argument, if you're the wrecking crew coach, that maybe we were too aggressive in that point. Um, it's a mental game. You know, do you do you sit on the back line and wait for them to come at you, or you push forward, yeah, right? Yeah, you go for it. Ah, you can argue either way. They did. They do chew up some clock, so yep. that's good. Yep. But I think they took a few, their players took a few too many risks and lost that point. Yeah, lots uh, of big moves. Yeah. Okay. Well. We're going back to City uh, Royal City Sea Dogs versus Newbies. There's 18 seconds on the clock. We'll see what happens. Uh, so if you're a viewer at home, you're either going to see two teams come out relatively spread across the back line, which is a which is a tell mm -hmm. that says, hey, we're not really going to try to win this point in 18 seconds. Alternatively, if you see a team sending two, maybe three bodies running through the middle like their tail is on fire, that's a team that says we're going to try to win it. Yep. That is risky, of course, because that you're – when you're running, especially when you're sprinting full out, it's really easy to not notice yourself get hit. Absolutely. And if you do that, you're, you're in line for a penalty. And if you get a major under 60 seconds, again, the point Wing ends point. instantly, and yep. it's a swing to the other team. Ten so it's, it's risky. Refs get their flags ready. I suspect you're going to see two teams spread across the back and just play I for overtime. I suspect the same thing. Yeah. Bite into the snake for newbies. Oh, Ooh, run up, up the, middle. the middle for the Sea Dogs. They lose their snake lose player, one. though. 
That is not a full commitment by Sea Dogs to doing some super aggressive, so I think they're going to go to time. And this will be an overtime yep. game. Just tried to see if they can make something happen. He crossed the 50s in their wedge. Yep. Okay. Good effort. I, that player did great, but the game plan clearly was not realistically trying to win it in 18 seconds. So they went a little conservative on that. All right. We are going back to the Leverage Wrecking Crew. Wrecking Crew up 3-1 over Leverage. Seven minutes on the clock. Wrecking Crew probably left a little bit more time on the clock than they should have uh, coming out of that last point. You're looking at Jacob Seba out there getting ready for leverage, affectionately known as Seabass. <laughs> think he likes to fish? I think he's probably getting sick of being called a bass. <laughs> All right. Thanks to our sponsors, here's another chance to get out there for uh, for some new gear. Go to activepbshop.com. You can even scan that QR code. Get in there. Some new stuff. There's uh, some brand new stuff being released by them on 11-29-24. I could have just said November 29th. That was awkward. You could have said that. Yeah. I'm so awkward. <laughs> I don't have any friends. You're good. <laughs> oh, a little bit of a false start Ooh. over here by New York Wrecking Crew. They, they managed. Yeah, they recover. Nice move up the middle. Both Ooh. teams. He is ready to come through. Yeah, leverage player is going to blow up this Wrecking, wrecking Crew. Crew knows. He knows right. he's in there. How did he get Ooh, past maybe him? Maybe not. There he goes. Right in the back. There's one. Nice counter move by Wrecking Crew up the middle. That snake player just posted up again, Wrecking Crew side. I don't believe anybody in leverage is aware of Wrecking Crew being on their side of the field. I have, I don't think they, yeah. So I think he should probably stay locked on snake side. Yeah, we call it the uh, the crisscross applesauce. <laughs> He's gonna actually gonna do a drop back. He might have taken one of the packs. Oh, sure enough, should check that off. Well, he doesn't think you shot him in his leg, sir. <laughs> Ian Rolson is going to launch. He's going to try to gonna trade. Launch. Yep. Yeah, Ooh. Takes a. Yep, that's fine. That's a trade. Extra. That's what he wanted. That's you what know. he got. Pudo's looking to go leverage side. You can almost see his brain analyzing, trying to find the route. One more body coming off a wrecking crew. Leverage now refilling the snake one. Leverage is coming through. Yeah, that's going to be a clean buzzer push. Wow, uh, wrecking crew really looked like they were in control of that early on, and it just yeah. all fell apart. Bringing it back now. And, and as a matter of fact, that a big pivotal moment in that point was when their player that had crossed. The 50, the other team side, he tried to do a drop back to say, yep. look, I'm not going to gamble my body. Yep. And the act of trying to drop back, be more conservative, has actually got him shot. Mm -hmm. So now Wrecking Crew, who just a couple minutes ago up, were up 3 nothing, are now facing 3-2. to two. Only up by one. Yeah, only up by one with a couple minutes left in the clock. That is not the course of events that I thought I was going to see when they're up 3 nothing. Like I said, this layout is crazy. It could, you know, go super fast, super slow. All right, we are all tied up here. Sea Dogs versus Newbies. We got five minutes on the clock, which is in these terms for Semi Pro, that's a ton of time. Mm -hmm. We could say we could possibly see four, even five more points in in five minutes. It's theoretically possible. Oh, my God, I'm being called out. They're in overtime. <laughs> We're going to see one point. I was going to say, I was really confused Yeah, no, no, no. We're in overtime. You get one point. Okay. All oh, right, first sea dog. for sea dogs. Yeah, they lost their snake corner. Five on four advantage newbies. Oh, another one comes out as soon as I say that. Five on three. Newbies are pushing the agenda here. They're already up in the Dorito 50. Uh-oh, and, and a minor. minor. That's it. Sea dogs are absolute train wreck territory now. Newbies coming through. That's going to be. Have we seen any newbies come off the field? No, five alive. 
Not that it really matters, especially in overtime, but they're going to be have five wow. alive. Wait, there's another. We saw a minor get thrown. No, the refs are calling off that minor. Never mind. They're saying that was an oopsie. Just kidding. What's an extra minor amongst friends? <laughs> All right, so one of the flat, one of the refs inadvertently threw a flag in there. You can ignore that. Moving on. Newbie's going to hit the buzzer. They have a lot of players to choose from. Wow. Newbie's going to win this one. Fast point. Great overtime match. I mean, you know, penalties will make fast points out real fast. All right, congratulations, Newbies. Good job, Newbies. All right, we're going to flip back over to the Leverage Wrecking Crew game. Wrecking Crew did have control of this match early on. They've kind of let it slip through their fingers a little bit. It seems to be the trend this weekend. I've seen uh, teams, you know, they take the lead, but then they lose momentum. Something happens. They get tired. And uh, other teams focus. just come back. Yeah. Yeah, it, you could be overconfident, too. You go up 3 nothing and you start relaxing a little bit, thinking, yeah, we got this. We're better than this team. No and room for complacency. No, not at this level. All right, thanks again to our sponsors. You're looking at a whole bunch of really good sponsors, too. Uh, a lot of companies there I know I buy product from. Uh, and if you're down here in the uh, Kissimmee area this weekend, please come by the trade show. Most of these sponsors got booths there where they're selling merchandise direct. I've spent so much money this weekend. <laughs> Holy moly. The shopping's good out here. My own, you know, one of my, my like, oh, man, I want to buy is I come down here, I see brand new guns at the World Cup. A lot of stuff gets released. And then I go, oh, yeah, I got to fly with it. Yeah. <laughs> How eh. am I going to get this home? Maybe I'll just wait till I get home and I'll just order it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll ask my local shop to pick it up. I, I'm just, I don't want to fly with it. A lot of the people, the Canadians I came with, the, you see, did you see the lineup for the JT Clears they were selling? Oh, wow. Holy, yeah. that line was around the corner. And uh, a lot of the guys are saying, like, how am I going to get this home now? <laughs> Yeah, goggles are a tough thing to fly with. I mean, you could fly home with them on your head. You there's could. No, there's no security That's reason that you, you can't fly home with them. Show me the rule. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, wrecking crew trying to stabilize the situation. They're going to be on your left, leverage on your right. They smell blood in the water. They have an opportunity Ooh, here. Yeah. Wrecking crew into snake. Leverage, five alive. Both teams, five alive. Wrecking crew into the snake. Leverage has that wing looking cross. Wrecking Crew is Aiden Chaseman leading the charge in the snake here. Wrecking Crew secondaries to take that middle wedge. That's a great move. Leverage is locking down the snake. They know that somebody's in there somewhere. We're just under the five minute mark here. Moran is just posted on that cross shot. Chase's been going a little bit passive in the snake. He's not mm -hmm. going to risk his body. He's got a teammate on overwatch with him. He's in there in that, that middle wedge. Keep him safe. So important to have protectors on this. Yep. As we say that, one of the New York wrecking crew comes off that Dorito side. So they're down to four bodies. Four five and five. On four. Moran trying to sneak his way in there. He knows that center guy's there. He's been playing there every point. One yeah. snap. There oh, the wrecking crew Flipped player looks him. away for just a second. Moran oh. takes advantage of it. Timing. That is a big kill. That's going to free up Moran to do a lot more of whatever he wants to do. They he can push their Dorito side. And just to say yeah. that, they push the Dorito side for leverage. He's, lo he's locked on to that. Did you just make a pun? Uh, he just locked onto that mini wall. He's trying to win that gunfight. Aiden Chaseman needs to come up with something to dig Moran out of there. Moran I think gets. This guy has a force field around him. Yeah, he gets around that corner. Oh, there's the Highway run through. Caputo coming in. Ooh, he might have had some bad information there. He tried to bunker the snake three, but he was in the two. Leverage is going to win that. Bring this back Ooh, to a 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three tie. We're going to be looking be three, at three. about 3.5, 3.45 on the clock by the time this gets hits uh, his buzz. 
where we came from. 3 nothing wow. to tie it up 3-3. Three, three. three straight points dropped by leverage on this game. New York wrecking crew, they need to get back in their pits and figure this out. I don't know if they've already burned their time out. But uh, if they have not, recall, yeah. this might be a good time to uh, call your time out. Take a breath? Yeah, figure it out. I mean, I would have said it 2-3. It was time to, you know, use your time out to give a little more coaching time. But if you haven't done it already, now you've got to do it. And if you're, if you're, uh, if you're leveraged, you've got to feel like you've got all the momentum now. Oh, yeah. All right, we are in X-Ball, what that means for those of you at home that are new and watching this. So um, normally we have uh, what's called split deck, by the way. Thank you to Paintball Dad. Paintball Dad uh, 908. Thanks, Dad. Out. Thanks, Dad. Um, it's not a phase. This <laughs> is who I am. <laughs> Anyways, normally we have what we call split decks. So it means there's two sets of teams, and they take turns going on the field. But inevitably one match ends earlier than the other one, and so we're left with just two teams playing each against each other. And so you get a little bit more time in between points uh, to get ready. Uh, well, effectively, you get less because there's not a game going on in between. But we give them two minutes instead of one minute. Still doesn't feel like enough time. No. <laughs> it never feels like two minutes. No. <laughs> oh, Wrecking Crew having a gun problem. They might be burning their time out. There, there it is. Go. Yeah, Wrecking Crew having a little bit of gun problems. Take a breath, boys. Yep, take a timeout. A lot of this game is mentality. It's so quick to just get in your own head. And uh, you're not playing on point. You're not playing your game that you know how to play. Yep. Well, all right, Wrecking Crew's got another gun. They're coming back out. They had a problem with... A gun, not a fine product like Planet Eclipse, sponsor of this webcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was a player failure, not a gun failure. Definitely. There you go. They got their timeout, so they got, they're good. No panic. Mm -mm. You know what, what? what's really annoying as a player when you have a gun go down and you scream, you know, you can't fix it. You just scream for a teammate to get your gun. And then somebody hands your gun, and it's just not set up the way you like it's, it. The it's the little things. Yeah. The tank's not on right. And, the you know. Yeah, the trigger is set up different it's than you weird. like it. Maybe you're playing with a 68 cubic inch tank when you normally play with an 88 or something like that. Yeah, I play with a 77, and a lot of my teammates have 68s on there. So if I ever had to switch a gun, it's just it's different. <laughs> I play with a 48 cubic inch tank most of the time. Oh, a baby. Yeah, a little tank. I have short arms. A little peanut. Uh, my mission is to uh, either go kill somebody or die in their bayonets within the first couple minutes. So you play the, the snake one off the break? Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm not fast enough to always be a snake player, but I'll do it. I'll go for it. <laughs> the intensity is real. All right, here we go. Three on three. Three to three. Just under three minutes on the clock. Anybody's game. Ooh, one coming off for Wrecking Crew. Immediately filled the snake corner. Leverage with a little advantage here. Five on four leverage. Leverage in the snake. He's free to go ahead and start crawling up. Nobody in, no, home's not looking at him and there's nothing in the brick. Leverage players should just keep going. Wrecking crew popping the top on the snake side here, trying to see what he can see. This is Moran, number 21 there for uh, for leverage in that snake two, snake three. He's looking cross, seeing if he can pick up a Dorito side kill. And Wrecking Crew fills out to that center wedge, trying to get that cross on the snake. They know he's in there. Got to be careful, yeah. Leverage also has that middle wedge, so they got good control of the snake. There's that crisscross applesauce we talked about. I didn't mean to talk to you about that phrase. That is what the <laughs> ski instructors use to teach little kids how to break. And as a Canadian, you're using ski t uh, terminology. You're falling into a real stereotype here. I just want you to know that, Allie. <laughs> Wrecking crew player in the wedge standing tall, trying to get a drop in. Leverage is going to lose one of their players on that back mm. line. So we're back to four and four. I just saw a big fill for leverage out in the Doritos. One coming off the wrecking crew out of the Dorito side. So four on three, advantage leverage. Wrecking crew has an island over on the Dorito side. Oh, and they lose their snake player. 
That's going to free up Moran. Uh-oh. Don't turn your back. Run through coming in. Leverage. They have a chance. Yeah, Leverage up. has a chance to close this out. Point conceded. I'm fine 46? with that. Yeah, so uh, Wrecking Crew is going to concede out of that one. They're going to leave uh, 49, 48 on the clock. So the coach saw that one going downhill, and he said, I want no part of this. Let's let's give me some clock. Let my boys have a chance to come out and do it again. Happened so quick. Again, that's the weird thing about this field. The first game's lasting about a minute or so. The second and third games, they just go on forever on this layout. I don't it's know why. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. And then you had that game was like, what, a couple, minute and a half, two minutes or something like that? If that, yeah, it's uh, really important to know when to capitalize off those moves. If you kill somebody off the break, that's, you know, that's huge on this yep. layout especially. Uh, we've had some uh, some clinics uh, up at AG Paintball in Wear, New Hampshire. They will bring in some of the pros. We've had Greenspan come in. We've had uh, Spica come in to run some clinics. Nice. And they really, really focus on getting that kills on the break. Yep. And I think they call it Project 54. 54. Which, I've yeah. heard of that, yeah. Yeah, they're like, that's just, it's an enormous advantage if you can get that kill. Yep. The flip side uh, is, you know, if you dedicate extra guns to get that kill and you don't get it, you've now probably given up a lot of territory. So you better damn well get those kills. Oh, by the way, this is the first time we've mentioned this sponsor, Pursuit of Glory. Uh, Matt M Mimaro, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, out of, I believe, Australia or New Zealand, uh, wrote a book called Pursuit of Glory. It's like, I, I've, I haven't read the whole book yet, but it's a bit like a, a typical journey of a player that's going to go to pro. He, you, you start with, like, a birthday party or something, you get the itch, uh, you move on, you end up on a team, you probably get spanked your first year playing. All of us, honestly. Yeah, and then you just keep digging and keep going. Looks like a really good book. I've barely gotten into it, but... Get a chance, you can find it on his website. I think you can also find it on Amazon. And yes, paintball, some paintball players can read. <laughs> Just got to sound it out, you know? <laughs> you want to wait for the audio book? That's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what happens on this one. Leverage coming out, breaking out into the snake. Risk the body up the center. Big move up the middle by Wrecking Crew. They take that middle brick, that's Ooh, huge. Run through coming in. Wow! Get that leverage player. I don't know. They don't know that he's in there. No, Wrecking Crew is no. on full free oh, frenzy now. Oh, and a minor for leverage. Is that two uh, minor? No, there's going to oh, be a minor on Wrecking both Crew sides. now. Absolute pandemonium happening right now. <laughs> Whoa! And, all right. <laughs> wow. Good man. Has Wrecking Crew learned nothing about throwing <laughs> their bodies into starting boxes? <laughs> Colton's dad needs to have a talk oh with that player. Oh, my goodness. Catch that New York flight, you know? All right. The ref's going to probably have a little bit of a conversation try to figure this one out. Yeah, we're going to have to see what happens here. The, the confusion factor on that was very, very high. There was a minor on each side, so. That's what it looked like. So yeah. there should be no game stoppage. Under 60, That's minors are not a, a game stopper. Yep. Were the refs able to pull the bodies, though, in all that confusion that they needed? I'm on the edge of my seat here. Refs over here by the snake having a little conversation. Oh, they're going to turn that into a minor, uh, into a major. And that's, the uh, question is which one? Which, okay, who got that? Because that would be a swing. Yeah. If it is leverage, that'll tie it up. And we're going to go to overtime. If that was on Wrecking Crew, then Leverage walks away with this match. Our head ref, Mikhail, having a talk with his refs, trying to figure it out. I'm seeing some, yeah, people uh, saying how much, you know, how good the refs are doing. and <laughs> Friendship, a lot of friendship. Yeah, both teams are prepping players as if they're going back on the field, so this might have just tied it up. Mm -hmm. The team seemed to think that that penalty was on leverage. But we'll find out here in a second. That is a very confusing set of events at the end of the game. You've got players flying downfield. You've got refs throwing flags. And by the way, when you throw a flag as a ref and you pull a penalty, obviously you, you, you pull out the player that, that committed that penalty, but you pull one or two teammates and 
you're supposed to pull the closest teammates to that penalty occurring. That is a lot to ask when you've got all these chess pieces flying around on the board. You see, that's why I run away. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually a legitimate tactic. When you see a flag open your team, you try to get way run away the from the opposite that. direction. Yeah, go pull one of my teammates. Leave me alone. I see leverage, or yeah, leverage out of the gate. Yep, so they're waiting. Uh, Wrecking crew's gearing up. They're they're ready if they need yep. to go back on. This is not settled yet. I think they got one more. 22nd point if there is one more. So by the way, if you're trying to figure out why we went from a minor to a major, and maybe I am too, the uh, a minor is when you get hit and you continue to play without killing somebody. That's the typical minor. You might have it on your pack or your arm or whatever, mm -hmm. but but you're playing enough to affect the game, but you didn't kill somebody. Now, if you have a hit on you and you, you shoot somebody else, that now becomes a major. You're going to get two bodies pulled for that offense. So the refs had a t in that confusion, it was probably very difficult, but the refs obviously identified somebody as having killed another player. Ooh, watching the replay on that one. So Nicole, right on top of that one, she knows what's going on, so she informed me that we believe this penalty is on Wrecking Crew. The refs are trying to figure out how many bodies to pull, time on clock, all of that business. Um, it should mean that the score is going to go to 3-5 in favor of leverage, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, they're ready to go. Wrecking Crew will probably have to start down a body. I'm going to guess. I don't know. I don't know if they had enough bodies to pull, but it wouldn't be surprising if they're going to have to play 4-5 and five with 20 seconds on the clock, down by two points. If that, in fact, is the case, this, this match is essentially decided in favor of Wrecking Crew. And if you think this match is over, then get ready yep. for the next match. Nasty versus Virginia Virginia. Virginia. Wow, I am a mess here. Don't hurt am yourself. I having a stroke? <laughs> Look at my face. Is he You're okay. Sagging. <laughs> Virginia Vendetta. And we got Tiki's Totem versus Preferred Mob. Last match, we had Bert from Preferred Mob in the booth with me. Now we're going to root him on. All right. So that was a reverse point. Was. Whoever shot that one. Our research division going into the archives, <laughs> figuring that one out thank for you, us. Nicole. <laughs> so, thank you, Nicole. So, Wrecking Crew argued successfully there should be some time put back on the clock, uh, which, is, fair. which is fair. That's in fair. all that confusion, the clock is the last thing that the refs were really worrying yes. too much about. So, they're going to put a little bit of time back on the clock. Mm -hmm. They're going to go back on the field. Realistically, though, five on three with 30 something seconds, that's, that's effectively over. So, Wrecking Crew will roll it out there. They'll see if they can do something about it. They made a great comeback attempt in this that was match. Huge, yeah. yeah. That momentum swing was insane. But looks like it's probably not going to work out for them without some kind of miracle. You just have to believe. <laughs> <laughs> not many miracles in this sport because all the players are going to paintball fields rather than church on Sunday. So you Fair. don't get many favors from the Fair. big guy. <laughs> If your crew, do you attempt something crazy? Or you just, you oh, just, yeah. You do? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're going for ego win here. Well, I mean, you might be able to claw a point out of this. Two points is effectively impossible. They are going to send some runners up Two the up middle. Two up the middle for crew. Yeah. Secondaries. Three up the middle. Yeah, they're going for it. We've seen nine second points before, so one coming off for crew. He's going to go for it. Crew trying to make that move. Oh, and he gets clipped by the home. Under 10 left. It's a mess. Crew's trying to go to work here. Yeah. Not a lot of time, but. And that is it. That will seal the deal. Well, that was an exciting match. Oh. There's a lot of, a lot of drama in that one. A lot of t twists and turns. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to come back with some other big matches. Thank you, Allie, for joining us in the booth. I had a great time. Oh, thank you for having me. You had it's it. good we're going to charge you for the seat. You have the best seat in the house for this match, which oh. is one oh, of the most you know entertaining what? of the day.
Will you take a high five? <laughs> That's yeah, all yeah, I yeah. have. Ooh. And then we freeze frame. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with more NXL World Cup action. Thank you.